So Void, this song is my song. The fourth song on this album is called Void, and it literally didn't get finished until like two weeks before we sent the album out. No, I, that's a lie. This song didn't get finished until like two days before we sent it out for mastering. I didn't really know much about the song. I just knew it was meant to kind of clean your ears out of the three other songs before, which are more or less playful. Concrete Kitten, definitely playful. Dizziness is about zombies and really in your face. And Quest is really in your face as well. And that's like the rock song, you know, with the catchy chorus and stuff. This tune really just washes all of that away and then preps you for a new experience on these last few songs, which is the real like meat of the record. Record, I think this song actually started as just a demo idea for a class project I had at Berkeley I was desperately trying to get into the music production major once I realized that I was terrible at jazz <laughs> and wanted to make music sound good instead it's very moody and soundscapey um, a lot more so than the demo and the form is pretty much exactly the same I just wanted something that built to a big finale since it was a demo before James actually learned the song at the recording session in 2014. Out of all the songs that I had prepared for this recording session, this was the one that I didn't have prepared that much, just because I didn't even know if we were going to use it. I wanted to focus on the other eight songs and make sure they were super solid. And I think we did this kind of close to last. And so Sam was in the control room counting measures for me while I'm trying to get through the song. And I think what we ended up with is great. Void is why eventually I will continue to bother Sam to write like a moody post-rock album if he ever gets around to it because I think it would be fantastic. I think the song is fantastic. The beginning of that song has really cool spacey vocal samples if you guys can tell that those were vocals. That's actually affected and reversed and stutter edited and reverberated and reverse reverbed and all that fun stuff copies of my little five-year-old cousin and her older brother just hanging out with me when I went to visit some family in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My cousin woke us up kind of early, like 5 a.m. or so, like as the sun was rising, and I had my camera with me, so I was taking a bunch of shots of the sunrise and us hanging out, playing, making shadow puppets on the wall, doing kid stuff, and I thought it would be fun to use those sound bites as sort of a way to create a space nostalgic, I guess. Nostalgia is kind of like the thing I keep coming back to with like the themes on this record. But now in its final form with the clock samples as like time passing and stuff like that, this song really feels a lot more like a bridge between the first and second half of the songs, kind of like as time's passing. So if you felt like the earlier songs were very like bouncy, fun and upbeat and in your face and kind of younger, I guess, this song is sort of like the void of time leading you towards the second half of the record, which is a lot more introspective lyrically and emotional as far as like Adam's concerned. So that ended up just being a really Really cool like transitional piece. I just remember when I recorded the drums for this song. Uh, this is the one song we use the Ludwig Black Beauty for. So it has a different vibe. Sam like destroyed this song man. It sounds so cool and it's so different than everything else in the album and it's a really nice break. You're already three songs in. You're probably already sick of us by now. Boom! Hit you with the instrumental interlude. My vocals aren't even on them. I'm pissed about it. To be honest, I'm pissed. I love this tune, and for me to not be able to sing on it, just kind of feels disrespected, but whatever. I basically put most everything that you hear on this song in, in the last two, three weeks before the record was mastered. Which is kind of hilarious considering how many years this record took to <laughs> finish. That was just something I wanted to wait until I really had a solid deadline so I could like make some solid decisions about what should go where and how much to add. Sam was working on this song like two weeks before we were supposed to send it to mastering. He was like, all right, I think I have a really good outline on it. The low B on my seven strings actually dropped to an A, so it's a drop A thing. So we really get that nice uh, bow at the end. And I just remember thinking, yeah, this is sick. We should send it to Richard. This was something that I got to add to right at the tail end of the creation of the album. We sent it to Richard the same time we sent him the uh, Concrete solo. And we were like, hey dude, just do stuff. I don't even think we gave him more of a, we didn't give him any more, uh, what's the word? Guidelines. 
We didn't give him any more guidelines than just do stuff. And then, of course, he comes back like two mm. days later and he did a bunch of sweet stuff because he's got a piano in his house. So we can just track real piano, not MIDI piano, like whenever we want, which is great. And then he says, hey, by the way, I also kind of just like rambled on and wrote this end part. Don't feel bad if you don't use it, but I was into it, so I recorded it. And you know, if you guys want to use it, let's use it. Listen to it. And it's the whole end part of Void, where it's just piano. Or it sounds like it came straight out of a Bloomin' EP, and it's just like him hanging out at his house with his cats, just like, playing piano. So we're all sitting there just like, yeah, this is going on the album. The whole outro, it's, it's germination, came out of just that last fluttery bell line as the guitars are fading away, and the vibes hit that last... He just plays it several times and said it would be cooler to have it sort of fade out. I think it was inspired by a show he saw recently, classical music. I don't know, it was just a very, very cool texture. And I actually really like what they did. That transition to No Beard is so cool. And Sam whipped that up in a day. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of stupid samples of James and Richard talking to each other about bad puns. So if you listen real carefully, you might hear something you recognize, you know? So I hope you enjoy Void. I think Void is one of my favorite songs we've ever written. I hope we play it live because it's just so different. Fans of Outliers, the other song that Sam wrote on our EP that is phenomenal, will really like this song because Sam's writing is really great. And also it's very pronounced and articulate and I can tell when it's something that Sam wrote because of the things that he does in his writing that are all really cool. So yeah, on to No Beard. Stay tuned because we're about to talk about Captain No Beard. That song is about me. It's good. That was Void. Now I'm going to sit here until I hit the five minute mark. Mashaga!